All right, guys, it's game day. We have this three by three matrix A, and it's saying to us, diagonalize me. I want it to be easy to take me to the 100th power, for example. See what I'm saying? So we want to diagonalize this. We have to write A as the product of the three matrices, C, D, C inverse, right? And uh, these, this matrix A is three by three, so that means C is going to be three by three, and C has to be invertible. So we got to be able to come up with three linearly independent eigenvectors of A. So let's see if we can do that. Because A wants to be diagonalized, but maybe it's not even diagonalizable. We got to check. So first step of any diagonalization problem, you got to find the eigenvalues of the matrix. And how do you do that? You say determinant of A minus lambda I three in this case, and you set it equal to zero. Classic. You guys have good practice with this. And so that's going to be the determinant of, you guys have done this a million times, you take away, this a minus lambda i3 just means take away lambda from the, di the main diagonal entries. So that looks like this. Okay, so now the question is, hmm, this looks like pretty hairy. How do we get the determinant of this matrix? Well, you could try to maybe do row reduction and do like, well, try to make it an upper triangular matrix, but how do you get rid of this three when there's a lambda up here? And so the best answer would be cofactor expansion. Um, so review the video on that if you need some practice, but basically we see this row here, the second row, or you can say the second column, but basically it has zeros everywhere except one entry. So the cofactor expansion would simplify a lot. So let's do that. Let's cofactor expand along the second row. And what do we get? Well, we get that the determinant of this matrix is equal to two minus lambda, but is it positive or negative? Well, follow the pattern. It starts plus up here and then it's like a checkerboard. So plus minus plus. So this is a positive term times the determinant of 1 minus lambda, negative 2, 3, and 4 minus lambda. Okay, so simplify this. It's easy to get the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. So we get 2 minus lambda times big brackets. Don't forget this. 1, negative 1 minus lambda times 4 minus lambda, and then minus negative 6. That's plus 6. A lot of, lot of, um, opportunity to make careless mistakes like forgetting these brackets or doing a minus six so now let's foil this combine the constants and then refactor and then we'll set it all equal to zero and then we'll be able to get our lambdas so here we go we have our characteristic polynomial fully factored so we can see from this pretty clearly that we have two eigenvalues we have lambda equals one and it only appears once right so lambda equals one has an algebraic multiplicity of just one. And then we have lambda equaling two, that eigenvalue has an algebraic multiplicity of two. You can see it's like a repeated solution. It comes up in these two factors here. So now that's kind of unfortunate, right? If we had found our eigenvalues and then discovered that we had three distinct eigenvalues, three totally different eigenvalues, then right away we would know that the matrix A is diagonalizable. Um, check the last video on that. But we only have two. So now it's a maybe. We don't know if A is going to be diagonalizable. If lambda equals two has a geometric multiplicity of two, then we would have geometric multiplicity of two plus a geometric multiplicity of one for lambda equals one. That'd be a sum of three. And then by that theorem that says if the sum of the geometric multiplicities equals uh, the number of rows, the number of columns, then uh, it's diagonalizable. So we got to check and see what is the dimension of the two eigenspace, right? That's going to be the definition of the geometric multiplicity of lambda equals two. And so we got to see, is the lambda equal two eigenspace two-dimensional or not? If it is two-dimensional, we're going to have um, two linearly independent eigenvectors that have eigenvalue two. And then we'll get that third linearly independent eigenvector from lambda equals one for a total of three linearly independent eigenvectors. And then we'll be able to make our C matrix. So we just gotta we just gotta check and see. So let's check for lambda equals two. Let's solve for a basis for our two eigenspace. So to do that, we have um, we have this equation: a minus two i, two i three, times a vector v equals zero. And if you remember, these vectors v are going to be the eigenvectors with the eigenvalue two. And so in order to solve for a basis for the, um, for the two eigenspace, we've got to find a basis for the null space of a minus 2i3. And so let's do that. So how do, you do, how do you find a basis for the null space? 
you make an augmented matrix like this, right? And so let's see, let's let's recopy down what our A matrix is. So then our matrix A minus 2I3, you guys have done this enough. You just take away 2 from the main diagonal, so you get this matrix. Okay, so in order to find um, all the vectors V that are in the 2 eigenspace of A, we take this matrix A minus 2I3, and we row reduce it and write the solution set in parametric vector form. That'll give us a, actually a basis for the two eigenspace. So let's do that. Here's our, here's our matrix A minus 2I3. And uh, I'm just going to leave off this augmented column because it's all zero, so it's not going to change with the row reduction. So I'm just going to say that this is row equivalent to, uh, we could do row 3 equals row 3 plus row 1, get rid of the third row, and then we could also scale the first row. So you, I, I, I'm assuming you guys are pretty good with row reduction by now. You get this matrix as your reduced row echelon form. Okay, so now we can write the solution set in parametric vector form. The solution set to this equation specifically. So we get x1 equals negative 2 thirds x3, right? That's this first row. And then we see, hold on, this is, this is good news, right? We see x2 and x3 are free variables. So we have two free variables. So right away, we're able to tell this matrix is diagonalizable. And how do I know that? Because since there's two free variables here, we know that the two eigenspace is going to be two-dimensional. Okay, that's the definition of lambda equals two having a geometric multiplicity of two. And then, as I discussed before, that means that the sum of the, all the geometric multiplicities, counting for all eigenvalues, is going to be three. And uh, that's that's all you need to know. And you'll be able to get a you'll be able to diagonalize a. So we have x one equals negative two thirds x three, and then we have x two is a free variable, and we have x3 is a free variable. So therefore, we can say our vectors v that are in the two eigenspace of A is equal to x2 times 0, 1, 0. I'm skipping some steps, but I, I'm sure you guys could do this too because you've practiced enough. You get this equation. Sorry, my computer like froze a little bit. OK, you get this equation. These two vectors form a basis for the two eigenspace. So you could say these two vectors are two linearly independent eigenvectors of A. And now to get our third linearly independent eigenvector of A, we're going to find an eigenvector for eigenvalue equal one, uh, lambda equals 1. So let's do that. For lambda equals 1, we... Uh, solve this equation a minus we solve this uh, system a minus 1 times i3 with 0 as the augmented column okay let's remind ourselves what is the matrix a and then we write down our matrix a minus 1 i3 and then we row reduce it to reduce row echelon form okay so just a side note on kind of like a higher level you should have been able to tell that you would have one free variable in the reduced row echelon form of a minus i3 because you should know that the lambda equals 1 eigenspace is only going to be one dimensional because up here we found lambda equals 1 has algebraic multiplicity 1 and remember that theorem that says that the geometric multiplicity the dimension of the eigenspace is always bounded between 1 and the algebraic multiplicity inclusively and since the algebraic multiplicity is 1 you should know already that it's going to have a one dimensional eigenspace or a, a geometric multiplicity of 1 and in that um, and then that manifests here in how many free variables you have. So we only have one free variable as expected. And then we go through that whole process of uh, writing the solution set in parametric vector form so we can get our basis vector for the one eigenspace. So we go x1 equals negative x3 from this first row. The second row tells us x2, see x2 is no longer a free variable, x2 equals 0 by this first row. Remember there's this uh, 0 augmented column that I took off. but but it doesn't matter. And then x3 is a free variable, so x3 equals x3. That tells us that our vectors v that are in the one eigenspace of A um, takes the form x3 times negative 1, 0, 1. So now we only have one basis vector, meaning the span of that one vector is going to be a line, and a line is one dimensional. So we can see that our one eigenspace is one dimensional and it has a geometric multiplicity 1, as expected, right? So then here is our third. Right, here's our first two up here. 
and we've just found our third linearly independent eigenvector of A. So we're good to go. So now we can go down here and say, if we want to diagonalize A by doing C, D, C inverse, we can do that. What is our matrix C? It's a matrix whose columns are the linearly independent eigenvectors of A. So, I mean, there's many, uh, many different answers, but let's just pick these basis vectors. So we're going to put this as our first column and this as our second column. So 0, 1, 0. And you could pick whatever order. It just has to match later. You'll see what I'm saying. 0, 1, 0. And then our second column is negative 2 thirds, 0, 1. And then our last column is going to be this guy. So negative 1, 0, 1. And then that's our C matrix. Our D matrix, remember, is a diagonal matrix whose entries along the main diagonal are the eigenvalues. And then they have to match where you put the eigenvectors. So I put these first two columns of C to be eigenvectors with eigenvalue 2. So that means I have to put 2 um, in the first and second column of D. And then the last column is 1. So do you see that? People ask me a lot, like, could I have switched these first two columns of, of C? Yeah, you could, because it doesn't matter. Like, it just has to match. And then the third one is just C inverse. And so you can actually calculate C inverse, or you don't have to. It depends what the directions say on the test. Usually they don't make you do that. But uh, if you really wanted to, if you are, like, crushing this test and you have a lot of extra time, you could compute this inverse matrix, and then you can multiply the three together, and you can check and see, do you actually get the matrix A? And um, and that's, yeah, that's a good way to check. So hopefully this process makes sense. Um, and I'll see you in the next video where we just drill some more problems that have to do with diagonalization.